This is Justin Blinko. Welcome to Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast, where we explore how to build freedom through the entrepreneurial process. Today, I speak with Martin Weissmeyer. Martin started Mr. Bitcoin, a Dutch Bitcoin ATM provider, the Bitcoin Embassy in the Netherlands, one of the most successful Bitcoin groups to date, and among many other things, he became globally famous after having NFC chips implanted into his hands. We talk about his first experiences with cryptocurrency, before Bitcoin had even been invented, quitting his job to become an entrepreneur on December 31st, 1999, his experience and recommendations after having the NFC chips implanted, and how to treat life as a party while still accomplishing your goals. You can find show notes with links to this and all other interviews at libertyentrepreneurs.com. We're a new podcast. If you found the show valuable, please follow us on Twitter at Liberty E Podcast, Facebook slash Liberty Entrepreneurs. We're also on iTunes and giving us a rating on there would really help us out. Martin, welcome to Liberty Entrepreneurs. Can you tell us how you got started? Started with the internet in early 90s. At that time, uh, we were sharing, that was in the uh, the university area, you know, section in Amsterdam where they had, uh, well, actually, there was the only place where you could get a, a proper uh, megabit or faster connection. So we were sharing the uh, the floor at the time uh, with DigiCash, which was one of the first cryptographic, you know, coin systems around, uh, founded by David Sean, and they were our neighbors. So this is where I, where I really got interested into uh, Wow. In basically in, 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 in well in cryptocurrencies uh, well we didn't call it that at the time uh, I was um, you know, our company had a, a small you know we were a web design company and we were focusing on high traffic websites well you know it's uh, generally meant adult entertainment at the time because it was the only thing people would pay for after uh, after that I've been basically involved in high traffic websites for banks airlines but I always kept this this link to cryptocurrency. So at first it was DigiCash, uh, then it was, was Gold. Not many people heard about it, but uh, it got you know shut down. But it was there before PayPal started. Then, uh, well, for, for a, f- a few years I, I, I worked as a, a independent contractor, but I didn't really like that. Like, I liked working for myself. You know, there's no point in in working for somebody else. If yeah, it's, it just gives more. It's more rewarding work to do to to to, to work on something you built yourself. So, um, and gradually, I uh, uh, did contracting for a lot of larger firms. But I found that it's it's just more fun to to run your own project and with your own team. So eventually, when I discovered Bitcoin in 2010, late 2010, I think it was November or December. Uh, it just I found it through LinkedIn. I was going through the old contacts. Uh, found um, found all the DigiCash contacts. They 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 went on to move to n- newer new, new different things, and one of them was was talking about uh, Bitcoin. So this is where I got interested into Bitcoin. I had plenty of time on my hands, but uh, because uh, my, I, I had to take care of my partner at the time was in hospital. So I I basically discovered Bitcoin, and ever since I've been just focused on on this blockchain technology and, and cryptocurrencies. And as an entrepreneur. What, what attracted me to, to, to Bitcoin in itself was that it allows everyone everywhere to participate in a sort of new global economy. And this is what totally fascinates me from an entrepreneur viewpoint. I don't think it's the best decision I made. I could have made much more money elsewhere, but the rewards, you know, it felt more rewarding to do this. So. Uh, then in uh, 2013, started Mr. Bitcoin, uh, worked on getting the first ATMs in the Amsterdam area. Um, this is uh, then, you know, we went on to do different things like, you know, the, uh, getting the more ATMs, uh, starting, you know, the uh, provably fair lottery, which we, we use for the Bitcoin embassy, uh, gradually educate the public about uh, about Bitcoin. And as a... Uh, well, how do you say it? It, 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 it? I think I found Bitcoin very rewarding in, in that it's it is a new technology. It's not really new because if if, if but it's it's just a, something that has grown out of you know the early systems like DigiCash, eGold. They had all the problems that it was centralized, and now it, this decentralization just just makes such a uh, makes it just change the the whole whole game. Um, yeah, it creates a platform that others can build on that isn't as easy to shut down or isn't as malleable. Absolutely. The other other systems were all centralized and basically Bitcoin 
address this centralization problem. Okay, we are still talking about centralization now with mining pools and all, but it's not not as centralized as as the other systems were. And you know, my, my also my eagle got when eagle was shut down. My eagle got stolen by the U.S. government basically because they were taking all the eagles, and not that they did anything illegal ever. So it it just felt. Do they that, still have that? Oh yeah, I don't think anybody got anything back. They just confiscated the whole thing. Uh, which I thought was well, it, uh, just like theft, you know. <laughs> so uh, in order to to have a free free economy and a free market economy where we, or, you know, nobody should be able to to just take your money, even you know, without reason, especially. So that's uh, where I started focusing on Bitcoin. And now for the past year, we've been really busy on you know, looking at blockchain technology in general. But you know, pass, look beyond the hype and see find good use cases for it, yeah. uh, started the Bitcoin embassy, which, is, which isn't really a company. It's an association of blockchain professionals. So um, yeah, from an entrepreneur viewpoint, it's the worst thing you can do. It's a nonprofit. But I found it very important to, to at least educate the public on the possibilities of the, you know, it's blockchain technology and Bitcoin. And uh, actually met a lot of people, bright people, uh, knowledgeable people, I think, you know, sometimes you just have to look beyond the money making thing, look, well, see what's best. And, and, and now within a year, we grew out, I think, a few hundred blockchain professionals, which are now all, uh, which are all members. And can be a little proud of that because we finally, finally have, have a group that's really worthwhile and the, the, all the intelligence together will be able to build cool projects out of that. Uh, it wasn't really a money-making thing, and we're we're not not focused on making any money with it. Uh, fortunately, I had uh, some reserves to uh, to to keep it going. So without the sponsorship at first, but uh, um, hopefully that will uh, will turn into some nice projects. This year we're working on uh, some extremely nice projects, and that will sp- spin off from the embassy. So basically, the embassy is basically uh, currently currently where where, where Putting most of my time in, uh, focusing on on getting all the prof- bit, Bitcoin and blockchain professionals, not just Bitcoin, any 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 professional interested in blockchain technology. Uh, from there, uh, you can build teams and just bootstrap new organizations. I think uh, this is this is what it what what currently what the embassy is all about. Uh, for, I've always been been you know the small companies, the startups I've been involved with. Most of them have been really agile startups where we had practically no money to start with but i think it's also part of the part of the um uh part of the you know the 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 challenge if you can start something with little or no funds then and grow it from there uh, eventually sell it or you know i'm not i'm not we're not selling anything in you know with bitcoin embassy or 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 mr bitcoin but in the past i've, I've built some some uh, some companies which have been able to to sell and, and this, this is what, what, what keeps me busy. Basically, I like the initial startup of the company, getting the people together, uh, getting pro- product live, and then, and then uh, uh, basically, you know, run it from, 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 from there. And I think that is most important to if you start a business, you shouldn't start it because you're after the money or after the profit. You should start a business only because that's where your heart is, you know, to follow your heart, <laughs> yeah. do something which you like, do it for five years or longer and get really good at it. And then you'll be automatically, you know, it will, it will, it will, it will, it will just, uh, it, it, it will, it will grow. The, 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 your business will flourish because if you put all your heart and energy in it, any business will flourish. I could be selling, you know, it could be selling mobile phone recharge cards. If I would, really like to do that yeah then it would be successful at it but as long as you as you focus on 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 the goal you can party hard uh, party <laughs> party party life's a party but don't just don't forget what the goal is keep keep an eye on the goal you know and th- this this i think what what makes an entrepreneur is is that you should just focus on the goal but don't just have a party doing it and and then everything will will just fall in place these startups that you've managed to bootstrap with no money, do you have any advice? How do you do that without having money? 
Are oh, there strategies yes. of, of cost savings or how do you get the, you know, the talent to work with you and the marketing out there and et cetera? Marketing is usually, well, yeah, you can't do anything for free, but uh, it's not that hard to start, you know, to, to register a domain, get a good web presence. Of course, if you're like uh, an agile startup, you don't have much money, you will have to learn WordPress and Ubuntu. You can't get around that and just make sure you you, you don't just depend on, on that many people and just get a small team together. There's a difference. I, I tried different things at first we we the first company i, I worked at in the, in in the, in the 90s so there was an internet startup uh the internet startup was wasn't really making a lot of money but it everybody who worked there was a partner in the process and uh, a partner in the company and i think by 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 making them responsible by making the people who, who are in your team responsible for 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 their part of you know of their job uh, and and having fun doing it, uh, you you can you can do a lot of things with very limited budget, and and I think this is more important. And even if you start just paying people, uh, they they will see. You, you, I, we we tried you know just paying people a salary, uh, but what I found is that even if you know if you give them more money, that will just be the work will just be a hurdle to get that reward at the end of the month, and in, instead of is uh, and and that that just doesn't give the it doesn't give the right um uh it, it doesn't give the right uh, uh the attitude for for especially for a startup because you can't you can't just you know that just doesn't work it, you, 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 we all know that if you start a new company that's not 40 hours a week work it's it's at least you'll be working at least 80 hours a week and you'll probably do that without any income for the foreseeable future so you have to get everybody excited on your team and keep them excited, keep them motivated. So there needs to be real intrinsic motivation or incentives, correct. not not the, the monetary incentive. That's the monetary the incentive is, is, can be a very bad thing. I think the, the motivation, uh, people have to be motivated and have to stay motivated because there will be dips during the process. And especially when you launch your new startup, everybody has his startup blues. They think everything's done now and the company will will go, but you know, will will just will 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 succeed. But that's where only where it started. After you launched your app or website or or service, you'll find that 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 that's where the work starts. And if people on your team realize that that it's not just building this app and then they will come no it's building the app and then the work starts and this is this is if, if everybody on the team knows that it also it, it it also keeps people motivated i think it's um it's difficult I, I don't think there is one single solution to having a successful business i think it's more it's it's it depends it really depends on on your team and I think the most important part is, is getting a team together where people are, are motivated and excited about the product. And that if they tell people, others about the product, that they will be able to motivate others too. And as I said, monetary compensation is uh, usually the worst. The worst. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't give you, get you any motivated people. It just, they just see it as a hurdle to overcome, to have this paycheck at the end of the month. And that's just, yeah. When did you first become an entrepreneur? Uh, well, the, the realization that I didn't want to be just an employee at a company came when I was working for KLM Royal Dutch Airlines. Every morning I would arrive at the office and there would be this big statue of the guy who founded the airline like a hundred years before me. He didn't live anymore. And I put a lot of effort in, in, in my work. And even though it was very rewarding, work was very, very rewarding. It, it just felt strange that I was working for this dead guy who just had this <laughs> statue in the, in the hall. And, and, you know, there was no, there was no real connection. You know, I could just work there, but it didn't, it didn't feel like I created something. Okay, great. I was part of a team that created cool stuff, but it, it, it was more that, you know, why am I working for a founder that's been dead for over, what, 50 years? And, and why am I I'm not doing this for myself? And this is when, you know, the, the, the trigger came New Year's Eve, uh, 1999, where I decided I will, I will not, 
I will not work for a big company. I will I will just you know start start working. What for happened myself. on that night? And I, was uh, you you were scared of Y two K and decided uh, from now on I work for myself. <laughs> almost right, almost right. I, uh, they wanted. I, I, I double checked their, their infrastructure, their uh, uh, airline ticketing system. We 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 uh, transformed the company from a, a paper-based ticket system to an e-ticketing system, which uh, was quite. Um, it was a large project because the entire company was based on this paper ticket uh, thing, and with the e-ticketing and the Y2K uh, checks, I did the Y2K checks, uh, double checked their infrastructure. We had a test environment where we basically tested if everything was compatible. Of course, everything was except for a few uh, feeder servers which were using old old OS2, IBM uh, stuff, and they weren't uh, Y2K compatible, but. That uh, that the New Year's Eve, they wanted me to sit in the bunker at minus three between all these servers and wait until disaster happened <laughs> or not. And that's where I realized I already have a party at New Year's Eve, especially the Millennium New Year's Eve. That was a big thing yeah. back then. So I was going to sit in a bunker for the biggest party of, of you know, what, the Millennium, basically. So I decided that so here is my resignation letter. Uh, I ch- double checked everything. You will not have any problems with Y2K, but I'm not going to be there on New Year's Eve in a bunker w- with a glass of non-alcoholic. So you made it to the party. Know? I already have. A party. I have had a party, so I I may had a great <laughs> party, but not in a bunker. Awesome. <laughs> uh, can you tell us a story of of a time when you made a mistake and what you learned from it? I started um, uh, with mobile internet development in 1997 or 1998 and that was just way 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 too early it was uh, WAP wireless application protocol the only phones that that could display your mobile internet pages were the Nokia phones and unfortunately I didn't know anybody with a compatible phone or a data subscription so it the biggest mistake I made there was that I I just underestimated I just overestimated the market that that would w- w- be there for mobile internet at the time because nobody actually nobody was interested in mobile internet. Uh, well, understandably so. It, it took another what ten years or so before uh, before Apple launched the iPhone, and and uh, I think therefore therefore I made the big mistake by not listening to the market, not doing proper market research. Before starting the company, I was just focused on the technology, and this is this is something I I don't, I don't regret it, but I think I wasted a year there. Yes, <laughs> you're in a very new field now, right? So with Bitcoin and blockchain applications, do you see That's any correct. parallels, yes. and how do you take that learning of being too early in mobile phone technology and apply that to this new technology that we're not really sure what the user base will be? In a way, yes, and I see a lot of others around me, especially also in the Netherlands, uh, where I'm where I'm based. Uh, I see the people making the same mistakes, where they 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 have a nice product, very innovative products uh, based on Bitcoin and blockchain, but they and they find a good, uh, you know, they find an investor or, or angel investor to uh, to help them start up. But they 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 uh, don't do any proper market research. This is also one of the reasons at the embassy that uh, this year we did uh, uh, the uh, blockchain adoption survey, Bitcoin adoption survey, where we uh, where, where we did you know an international survey about uh, you know the, the Bitcoin right now, the state of Bitcoin, the state of how how do people perceive Bitcoin? Are they using Bitcoin? Do they have Bitcoin? Do they know people that have Bitcoin? The survey was done. Uh, uh, because the, the, in in uh, the embassy, the Bitcoin embassy w- was uh, did the survey because we found that there was no such survey done yet, at least in the Netherlands, and we hope to to basically give new startups at least some some data where they can base their market research on, so they don't make the mistake that they're building something where there will be no clients, because this is this is something. Oh, uh, especially in, in earlier years of Bitcoin, a lot of companies had this problem. They, they, they started something great, but nobody is using it. And, and you know, you can't, you can't keep, keep running this company. It might be, you know, the timing might be off. It's not just a matter of, of having a great idea. You also need the timing to be right. It's like putting in a market, putting it on to market on the right time. And this is the mistake I made with, with mobile phones, at, uh, mobile internet at the time. 
And I see a lot of people making a similar mistake with Bitcoin. It's like, you know, if you if you're not making any any big money the next few years, then you have to adjust. It doesn't mean you shouldn't build your product. It just means you have to scale back your expectations and it might be it, it will grow eventually. But people people can't just you know build it and expect a market to be there you know do your market research that's what i tell everybody do your You'd market say, research uh, take the emotion out of it of how much you love the technology and look at the practical information that you have about why how someone might be able to use what you're building exactly yes you got global news coverage after a, a, a surgery you had can you tell me about that Chip, chip implants. Yes, uh, that was it, it. It was a bit, you know, uh, at the time that was last year. No, it was yeah, last year, uh, 2000, December 2014. A mate of mine, Amal, he uh, he has this uh, company called Danger Things, and he created a sort of Bitcoin, sort of uh, NFC implant chip. And I, I met him through Facebook. I thought, oh, this is cool. Uh, I was already toying around with NFC technology because I was uh, looking for ways to secure Bitcoin and look beyond the, the, the obvious QR codes and paper wallets uh, by, by using an NFC chip. You could make a sort of like a hidden Bitcoin wallet. It could be a, a book. Uh, you just scan the cover and it would, you know, your Bitcoins would be in there. So uh, when I saw uh, this mate of mine create those chips, I said, I definitely want a few of them uh, because this way, you know, if I figured if Bitcoin is money without bankers, then you know okay nobody's going to to keep your bitcoin safe for you you have to take care of your bitcoin yourself so how are you going to do this if you don't if you're you don't, if you if, if you're not a bank so uh, by you you're sure you can print a paper wallet and you can store it in a safe somewhere but the the, the idea was to create to basically create an, an offshore account basically inside you know in a chip implant so uh, this this was just a side project. It wasn't. It, uh, if I if I would have known uh, people would react this way, I would have put more effort in making a proper video uh, <laughs> for the YouTube. But I just just put it together and I thought, well, this is kind of nice idea. And I never expected uh, 65,000 views on a single YouTube video in such a short time. So it was a bit. I was a bit overwhelmed by the attention it got. But I, it was just logical thinking. You know, Bitcoin is money. But Bitcoin is money without banks, then who's going to keep your Bitcoin safe? And I think the best way to store them, well, somewhere inside your body, you know, you create an offshore bank account in your body. And it also redefines, I think, asset management. If people will be able to store information inside of them without, you know, it, it, it just changes everything. You know, <laughs> I mean, you can get a, a search warrant. People can get, or the government can get a search warrant, for example, to 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 search your house, but that doesn't really immediately give them the right to you know, do a body scan, you know. As you're crossing borders, <laughs> do you hold funds on your in your hands, and do you declare that that money, or how, how does that work? Is there any legal precedent there yet? A while back, we had to um, give a presentation to the National Bank of the Netherlands. Uh, they wanted to know more about Bitcoin and its associated technologies. But before they let you in, they um, they have this like air, airport like security scans, you know, because they don't want any NAS, uh, you know, problems uh, inside. So I uh, asked whether they could uh, scan my hand. Um, the most uh, sensitive uh, uh, setting the, the metal detector had and they were not able to uh, to detect it. So I concluded that, yes, it doesn't show up on metal detectors it doesn't show up on body scanners it does show up on an x-ray if you get this modern high definition x-ray so you know declaring declaring what's there to be <laughs> it's declare. part of your body yeah very cool <laughs> yes i think this is um i got a lot of uh, uh, a lot of questions about that and and some people you know they said oh it's the work of the devil and you know got all the craziness but i think you know if you think that's the work of the devil, pray for brains, you know. <laughs> so now, do you use so, that in your in your day-to-day -day Bitcoin spending? Yes, I, I, I must say I don't have that money, many Bitcoins myself. Yeah, As The standard answer to how many is enough to buy a pizza. But <laughs> uh, for my uh, work for Mr. Bitcoin, I've, I've been... Uh, 
basically taking care of other people, you know, trader trader coins, uh, people that want to uh, to sell their bitcoins through the ATM network. Um, those uh, those bitcoins, it's my obligation to keep them safe. So this way, I. Um, uh, I, I, I used chips for that. Yes, of course. Yes, I use them on a day-to-day basis. I use them to snooze my alarm clock. Uh, I use them as business cards. Uh, you know, it's many, many, many different possibilities. Cool. People say that uh, the, 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 the storage capacity is limited. It's under 868 bytes. So, you know, 868 characters. But when I grew up, uh, we didn't have a PlayStation 3, but we had an Atari 2600. Uh, and that Atari had less memory than each of my chip That's implants amazing. has nowadays. Uh, it lo- allowed me to play Pac-Man, Space Invaders, Defender, <laughs> everything. So, you know, I, I think it's, if, if, the, if the, uh, the possibilities are limited or the technology is limited, you just have to think out of the box and it will still be able to create something cool with it. So... Yes, I didn't want to wait any longer and, and just, just went ahead and took the implants, yeah. Was it painful? Ah, a little bit. And uh, my doctor, I went to my uh, my, my home doctor, my, my, my regular doctor, and I said, you have to give me this implant. And he started laughing. He basically laughed, me in my, laughed in my face and said, no, 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 I'm not going to do that. I said, but you are my doctor. You have <laughs> to do that because I pay you for the consult. He said, no, you totally get it wrong. I will help you when you're sick, but you're not sick. I'm not going to help you. So I was, I had, you know, it took me about a month or so to find somebody that will want to implant it because uh, the tattoo artist didn't want to do it. The piercers, the guys in, in Amsterdam, the piercing studios, didn't want to touch it. They were looking at me like I was crazy. And I eventually found this body manipulation artist uh, who was, uh, Apparently, uh, also became a dealer for uh, for or a distributor for uh, Amal's chips, and I already had the chips. So I said, you know, can you can you just help me with this? And he put them in. It it feels like uh, getting a I don't know this this drip, you know, like this this drip when you're in the hospital. Yeah, the IV. Yeah, IV. Correct. It, is, it felt felt a bit like that. Uh, I made a big mistake with uh, with my right arm that I immediately started programming before the blood dried up. And that's it, that's not not very good. You should, <laughs> people should just wait. It's like getting a new mobile phone. You have to wait until it's properly charged. And the same with the implants. Just wait until it heals a bit. You know. Good advice. But it, it, it's not it's it's not that painful. And I would say everybody interested in it do get one. It's it's the best place to store cool. your crypto. Martin, you were working at KLM and decided this is enough. I want to work for myself. What advice would you give to someone who's in that similar situation, pondering the idea of, I want to be an entrepreneur, I don't know what my right idea is, it's a little bit dangerous. How would you think about this if they were you? Look for look for what you will do after you quit your job, because I quit my job and didn't have anything else lined up. So that was a tough three months, very tough three months without any income whatsoever before you know the business started going. And I think my advice to anybody in a, in a, in a full-time job job anywhere is to to first find find what you're you're going to do before you you know don't burn your bridges before you you know found some something new so yes so do some preparation work before you pull the trigger exactly my i was i i just jumped in and 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 didn't didn't do any preparations whatsoever and this is this i think you know you you I, you can prevent you can prevent a lot of problems by uh, by just you know, you know, at least lining up a few clients before you decide to start for yourself. Let's go into the lightning round. Can you share a tool, shortcut or hack that's helped you succeed? Uh, I use Google Gmail for everything. Uh, if, if you if you really want to start uh, think you uh, I use use Gmail for everything. If it's not in, in, in my Google calendar, it just has never happened. Uh, I find that everything I, I do it. Sometimes it's just the pace of things are so fast. That I, uh, I, I, uh, I lock all my kilometers automatically using 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 this tool called Dash. It will post uh, any kilometers I made on my car. It will post it to my calendar. Uh, basically, just just try to automate as much of your daily daily tasks as possible uh, using using Google Apps. Uh, this is uh, this helped me tremendously in. Uh, in organizing, basically organizing my life, but also be, be a, being able to to look back in time and see what have I done, when, where, and uh, w- without without it taking any extra time from my part, it automatically basically it's a live log. Now that actually sparks a, a question that I'm curious about. You mentioned 
using all of Google's products and you have electronics embedded in you. How do you think about the privacy implications of this, uh, you know, all these different applications that now are intelligent or have the ability to log data? Yeah, it's kind of creepy in a way, but um, I think the benefits outweigh the risks. Uh, I could try to do everything self-hosted, but uh, in reality, that just doesn't work as, as smooth. So it's, it's a trade-off, you know. Uh, my life is pretty open. I don't have many secrets. Uh, there is uh, most most of the stuff about me you can find just on the internet. So, so for me, it doesn't really matter. But if people have an agenda and they want to hide stuff, hide information, then yes, don't use the clouds. <laughs> That's... Uh, yeah, I, th I think it's 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 not a good thing that 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 this is happening because especially with the Snowden thing that they basically you know everything in Google is being monitored. You know, and on the other hand, you get a free backup from Homeland Security. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not necessarily used in your favor, but yeah, they've they've got it. Yeah, it's a free free cloud service. They back up everything. <laughs> <laughs> What's your most influential book? Ah, that must be the handbook of cryptography. It helped me understand. Uh, it helped me understand everything I know about cryptography. It's a, it's a big, big Bible, <laughs> and it's just about cryptography. And it, it helped me uh, understand uh, uh, everything: PKI and encryption and, and and public key, private key system, every everything. So, yes, um, I love reading. I loved reading that. Uh, it's been a long time uh, already. I, most of the books I read nowadays are very much. More, it's more white white papers. I just read white papers. I don't have time to read many books anymore. But uh, yes, applied handbook of applied cryptography. That's my main. You know, this cool. it all started <laughs> for me. Do you have a most influential role model or entrepreneur that you look, looked up to for ways to lead your life? Uh, yes, several. In in general business, that would be Richard Branson because I totally subscribe to this party hard and but keep an, uh, an eye on you keep your eyes on the goal. On the in the Bitcoin world, it's uh, must be uh, knowledge wise Kevin Andreessen because of the work he done for Bitcoin Core, but that's not necessarily entrepreneur like. I think you know Eric Eric Forhays. Uh, did I think one of the best uh, examples of how to how to start a Bitcoin business uh, with Satoshi Dice at the time and Coinapult? I think those uh, those are I think best examples of how to how to run a, how to actually start a business and a good business. Yes, I think those 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 two, Richard Branson and Eric. How does being an entrepreneur provide liberty and, and freedom in your life? It's um, I think it the the, the biggest freedom. Is being to able uh, being able to pursue your dreams in a way, you know, if they make sense from a business point of view, uh, you'll be able to 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 basically make decisions. Otherwise, decisions are made for you uh, by being your own own boss. You can decide that that yes, uh, the weather in Amsterdam is not nice in the winter, so yeah, we'll spend our our, our winters in in in, in a different place. Um, there's just more freedom with more freedom come also also come more responsibilities but i think most entrepreneurs realize this and they'll be they, they will they, they will not mind i think it's just the freedom you get from being your own boss it's it's just the reward is it's just i can't compare it to to anything else it's just it just feels better it feels it feels like a more balanced life you know you'll be able to pursue your dreams and build something you can be proud of so i think this is this is very important for me great and now to sign off if you could give the users any contact information and then if you have any asks for our audience um anything that they can check out or how to follow you um yeah i can i can be found on the bitcoin embassy as a co-founder of that it's bitcoinembassy.nl um, if uh, if anybody is interested in in joining us, it, we're not just there for the Dutch community. We try to to, to unite all the blockchain enthusiasts worldwide. Uh, if if they have a Bitcoin project they want to to sponsor or to support, or they need support, or they need need sparring partners to to uh, to see if it the idea is good, uh, they're welcome to uh, to sign up at BitcoinEmbassy.nl. And if they use the coupon code Happy 2016 then they get the full membership for free. They have, just have to enter it uh, 
they just have to enter it uh, during checkout. Sorry for the for the noise. Uh, that's my phone. When when you join the the embassy, you get a, a welcome a welcome tone like that. <laughs> it's my phone. I forgot to turn it off. Sorry about that. But uh, yes, the the idea is that uh, uh, we we want to include each and every blockchain enthusiast, no matter how 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 many skills they have or haven't got. Uh, I started as a Bitcoin skeptic in 2010, uh, learned more about it, became enthusiastic, and now now I'm basically educating others uh, on 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 blockchain. We created a, a course at the university where we um, where we uh, uh, basically uh, not. You know, we, we explain Bitcoin to, to the new students, computer science students in Amsterdam. There, there is not much out there uh, education wise on Bitcoin. Uh, there's plenty of stuff over on the Internet so people can can learn it themselves. But it, it can be a bit daunting uh, at first. So so this is this is how we uh, we, we try to to to, to basically get more people Bitcoin aware, but people who are already, you know, Bitcoin aware, they want to have, have an idea or business idea, or they just, just want to, you know, need help promoting it, or they just want to meet other blockchain enthusiasts. This is, this is why we started the embassy and, you know, anybody listening now, and if they're interested, they can just use this code during take checkout, happy 2016. And then if they have a full membership, they put it in a card, it saves them, I believe, a tenner or so. And you're on Twitter, right? What's your Twitter handle? Oh, my Twitter, uh, Nick, is uh, tweet, T-W-I-E-T. So that's tweet, uh, uh, but in Dutch. <laughs> so T-W-I-E-T, tweet. <laughs> I don't have that many followers, though. My Mr. Bitcoin Twitter account has many more followers, but... Uh, well, and we'll uh, we'll link put links to all of that on the show notes so that people can check that out. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, Martin, thank you so much for sitting down with Liberty Entrepreneurs. I really enjoyed the conversation and wish you a great 2016. Thank you for having me on your show, Justin. I hope to stay in touch. <laughs>